Hey, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all our fellow listeners of the Financial Grill podcast. First and foremost, we are happy to be back mid-year, mid-time. We pre-record a lot of our episodes for some reason. Sometimes we just come back and, you know, take a little bit of a break, um, capture a few more stories, figure out what we're going to need to do next, and also win uh, FinCon scholarship. So we're definitely going to be on FinCon this year. The Financial Grill is in the building. We applied for the scholarship and they graciously provided us some free tickets. So we will be in the buildings having a good time uh, and linking up because we want to bring in more guests on this show. We want to bring opportunities for you to listen, learn, and also change your life with everything that's going on in society today as it relates to gas prices going up, grocery costs going up. Life is just about as expensive as you can ever get it today. Brunch is inflated. And I talked about brunch at the very beginning. So brunch is inflated. So we outside is very expensive. And I, I hope we get to discuss that today, as well as talking and broaching the conversation about entrepreneurship and regards to the pros, the cons, and what you can look forward to in, in your moment of pivoting. In the end of the day, I'm your host. I'm one of your hosts, uh, Lawrence Delva Gonzalez, otherwise known as the Neighborhood Finance Guy on the interwebs. And I'm always here flanked by uh, one of my best co-hosts, uh, probably my favorite co-host, which is lovely because Atlanta is never around. And just in case, you know, you, 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 you don't like the fact that she's not around, let her know in the comments because she'd be out here living her life trying to get her, or her boyfriend, her new boyfriend, who knows? We don't even know anymore. Is it an old boyfriend, a new boyfriend, or is she clocking in trying to get a, a next boyfriend? We don't know. But either way, she'd be putting in work because she does not want to be single. So that's for sure. But that being said, I'll pass it over to my co-host. Alantha, if you get to hear this, which I'm sure you will, I'm pretty sure you're going to give a message and I will be waiting for your comeback and just paying attention and I will have my emojis and my gifts ready for you. The my clap back. Is, the clap back will, will be true. But um, everything that Lauren said, co-sign it. This is like mid-year. We're about, at the end of this month, we'll be exactly halfway through. And it's about to be real. It's already real because like you said, inflation is already here. It's not coming. It's like, it's right here. It's in everybody's face. But I am on the interwebs. I'm on TikTok. I'm on Instagram. And brunch is in effect. Brunch is still happening. The club is still popping and everything is still going. We are operating. I think what's so crazy about this is that COVID made us retreat and COVID made us save, right? People were like making food at home. We were having this thing. And then as soon as like COVID is not over, by the way, as someone that's been literally in the hospital for the last 30-ish days, the numbers are high. The numbers are really high. So COVID didn't end. It's just that the mandates ended. And so everybody was like, team, we outside. And that also means team, we are spending money. And real money is being laid out. I have seen the outfits. I have seen the, the mimosas. It's a lot. However, Lawrence also just went on a trip. So Lawrence, you know, and we've been posting about your, your food and stuff like that. So you can't, you just can't come for the people. So where's the balance in all of this? If we're saying, hey, there's inflation, there's this, how do you still live a balanced life without necessarily being inside like we have been for the last two years or so? Except for the people in Florida, because y'all have not been out inside. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, Florida, Florida never went, in, went inside. They always been outside, but... I, I don't know. I think that might even be another podcast, to be honest with you. That's a whole conversation about the idea of balancing um, any level of your cash flow. And I think that's where the that's the evolution of financial literacy for me. It goes beyond budgeting. And then it goes to the next step is like, hey, people are trying to be debt free because these are the concepts that people are hearing. And then in 2020, we heard a lot of people pushing the idea of investing, 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 because everything was going up. Everybody looked like a guru. Everybody looked like they had a mastermind going, attend my classes, invest, and you're going to make money. In truth, it was just the market going up, up, and up. The real genesis of what financial literacy is, as well as the baseline of what wealth building is, is cash flow uh positivity right that's really what it is it's what's cash flow positivity that means hey you have your income minus your expenses and the the difference in between that's your cash flow so a lot of people are not surplus, right well, yeah that should be in the surplus a lot of people are not cash flow positive then when you talked about the savings rate it remind me uh the only time the, the well the average u.s uh savings rate went up beyond 10 percent was april of 2020 
it hit a staggering 33%. Why? Because everything was closed. Yeah. So for all these and years, that was like about a like, month when everybody yeah, started getting yeah they're like we, we can't we we can't save any more. No, you can actually save more if you stop going out. <laughs> like if you stop spending your money, and that was the only time that the average U.S. household um, saving rate went straight up through the roof. It's not like we're unable to; it's like we just don't want to. And like you said, now that everything has kind of pseudo reopened, everybody's going back out to spend, 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 and the average debt now is actually pre-2019 um, levels, pre-pandemic levels. It's actually up for, um, I think it's $841 billion is the consumer debt in the U.S. now, which is in a staggering amount. So essentially, we, we did a pool, you know, 180 on that. We didn't go back we, to where yeah, we, we were. Yeah, we went right back to where we, we went were, and, and we went beyond that. We actually did a, you know, probably a two, 270 or something. We just went beyond that level and we're, we're actually clocking it in. And a lot of uh, the lifestyle that we refuse to change is inflated and is costing us more. Right. So with that being said, and I guess back to that question you asked, like me and my wife, we just came back from an amazing four days or probably yeah, it was like five days, but really yeah, four I nights. Excel. It was really good. Thank you for that, by the way. I was like, oh, OK, this actually gives a bandwidth of everything else. Yeah. Um, the email you sent out. Yeah, I'm going to actually write it in the, on the blog as well to just chronicle and give everybody ideas what they could do better. But we went to this um, city. It was amazing. And we're able to do these travel trips because we don't have to get ready if we stay ready. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Like our financial plan works in a in while things are great and even in a downturn. Okay, That's the whole point and, of having a good financial plan. And you're talking about the financial plan. So where does that start? Because I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you these questions because we're already in this cool. conversation. We don't need to pivot. Okay, okay. All right. We're in this conversation. So this conversation, I'll stick with this topic then. Yeah. So um, okay. Financial plan, because we're going to break it down because I think I hear from a lot of um, our audience or even just feedback is that they feel as if like, we hear you, Lawrence, we see what you're talking about, but I still don't understand it. So, and, and that's just real. I hear it all the time. Like Lawrence is great, but I don't, I, I'm, I'm not piecing the pieces together. So when you say financial plan, are you talking about me just paying off my debt? Like, are you, what are you talking about? Having a financial plan? Uh, well, that, that's why it gets a little bit hard to explain because financial literacy of wealth itself is not just one or two concepts. It's all the concepts at once. You okay. have to mirror what is known as what you got the cash flow. You know, you have to understand what cash flow is. You have to know, understand what net worth is. You got to know what a budget is and how to set up your own budget. You have to understand tax uh, planning implications mm -hmm. as well as long-term investments, estate planning, and, and, and so on and so forth. So everything is included and it's an entire- multiple layers. Yeah, it's multiple layers. It's not just something you just like, oh, I'm just going to pick this up and it's just going to happen for me tomorrow. That's okay. not what this is. This is a tried and true, you're taking this walk, you're taking this journey. That's why it's, you know people talk about their financial journey because it's not just like a, a day tour. <laughs> it's not down the street uh, power walk here. It's something that takes time to develop. A lot of people, the way they approach financial literacy is like, well, I want to go run a marathon. That sounds kind of in insane if you've never even went that, down the block running. So, so you might want to, one, put on some tennis shoes, wake up in the morning and see if you can, you can even make it around the block before you even other the idea that you want to run a marathon. It's going to take time. It's going to take training. It's going to take some level of motivation, dedication. And it literally comes down to a lifestyle change. What is important to you? For me, it's always been traveling. I love to be in other places. I want to challenge myself with different language, different, uh, I, I like to learn history and live history or see history, see the edges of the world, that kind of stuff. I'm that kind of soul. It just so happened that my wife is also pseudo kind of that way too, or she's also a planner. So it mirrors very well that we just like to travel and see the world in a safe way. And that's what we do. And as such, we don't necessarily pump money to areas that are not as intentional or impactful to us. So you won't see me rocking the latest J's. You won't see me, you know, driving like a, a Maserati or an Alexis uh, RX-7 or something. It doesn't matter what it is. For me, it's just not important. You might even see me in the same shirt or the same hat. It's just, I don't care about those things. What I care about is to be overseas. That's okay. what I care about. That's my focus. So we're going to put a pause on that. So if you're listening, just to rehash re that, essentially financial plan 
planning requires multi levels. You talked about being understanding that word, also understanding estate planning, understanding budgeting. There's multiple things that are at play to make a financial plan. But before you even start talking about those things, you have to define, redefine your values, because maybe your your lifestyle has over index. So maybe you're buying things that may not necessarily give you experience, which is fine. We're not against people buying things or spending their money any type of way, but you can't necessarily have a great financial plan if you don't have a great vision for what you want and what you value. And I think we've talked about this multiple times on um, Financial Grio is that oftentimes what we think we value is still seeking validation from other people. So maybe we think that we want the great car, but maybe there's something connected to that car of making you feel like, well, if I drive a BMW or if I drive a Lexus and I'm more valuable, but that, that's really not truly your value. So there has to be like a heart check and an alignment to say, okay, I thought these were my values, but really what are my values? So I think that's also like this quote that I hear often. Like if you want to know what somebody values, look at their bank statements and really see like where they're spending their money and all this different stuff. But I also think that there's also a lack of awareness. I think I want to ask this one question because I, don't, I have a lot of questions, but I'm not going to overload you. But this one question no, is- No, go ahead with the questions. I always take questions. I've been looking at people like, this is the life. This is amazing. TikTok, I've seen this often that you cannot budget yourself out of poverty, meaning that people feel as if, well, at the end of the day, I'm not making enough money, so I can't really have a budget because I'm not really making enough money. What do you think about that? What is what what is that theory? Because that's all the videos I see often is the people saying I can't budget myself out of poverty. So you're telling me to be financially literary, I'm literate, you're telling me to have a financial plan. I can't even afford the base, quote unquote, basic lifestyle that I have right now. Okay, that's an that's an very interesting kind of like idea idea that's flowing or opinion that's flowing on social media, and likely it's, it's a very easy opinion that's so floating around society. Period. The idea that you know this is hard. Whatever it is I'm staring at is so very difficult that I'd rather lean into any other message that are already aligned with what I I was looking for. So instead of saying that I could actually do something, I'd rather say, well, I'm going to align with this other peer group of people, like this massive group of people that says it's impossible because we're not making a lot of money. That's the easiest way to, you know, I guess, scapegoat accountability and opportunity from your hand and just say it, it, it belongs to somebody else. And in, in truth, I think that's the worst uh, way you can kind of go about defining life because one is so easy to just gravitate to that idea, but it doesn't really make a lot of sense if you do it mathematically. And I'll tell you this, why? Because even if you invest $100 per week, even if this is $100 per week for 40 years, you're going to be a millionaire. So you can technically budget, your, you know, budget yourself out of poverty. It's just going to take longer. Yes, there is truth that, hey, the more money you make, the more likelihood you can probably use that money to create more wealth for you. But it still doesn't matter because you're still going to have to put in the work of investing anyways. So there's almost like this road, almost like circular way that you still get back to the initial problem is that you have to put in the action. If that makes any sense. I've seen well, people... Yes. Because uh, you, yeah. we talked about it, I think um, we talked about this multiple times in our group chat, but you, you've posted this on social media that people are making over six figures. Some people are making $200,000 and still living pay to check to paycheck. So that means to tell us that you can, no matter how much money you're making, can still be in a place of poverty because of how you're using the money or how you're exercising and extending the money. But I don't think the person that makes less, quote unquote, really believes that somebody's out spending $200,000 a year. Well, that, that's true, too, because you don't have the prox like if you're not the proximity of the people making over six figures, if you're in an area where people ge generally make at the maximum level 60K, you might not understand conceptually some people in other sections could be making 100K and still broke. You're like, how? Because their lifestyle is still very expensive. Either the the I seen the rent for the av the national average rent is like two grand, but I did see a two two um, in South Florida renting for three grand per month. Yeah. That's an insane, yeah, that is 36 that You could have bought a home, bought a home and moved anywhere else. But not only that, day? what's interesting is that Florida does not even have like a high pay rate. So on average, most people are not even earning well in Florida, period. Yeah. So basically people are buying into what they perceive to be luxury lifestyle and the, um, basically surrounding you, surrounding yourself with the, the debt traps, uh, the debt entrapments of looking like you're wealthy. 
buying cars, you know, saying, oh, well, they, they sold me a car that was expensive. Well, well, you bought the car that was expensive. They ain't, nobody put a gun in your head to make it happen for you. You decided this. You made it a priority in your life that this is the way you want to look. And because the way you want to look, you end up being more and more uh, in debt. And that's a problem. So to get back to the question you asked about, you know, can you really kind of like, I guess, budget your way out of uh, poverty? I, I personally believe it's a yes. But a lot of people naturally, they're not being honest with themselves. Some people just don't want to change. Literally do not want to change. They like everything about their life. They just want money. But everything about your life is the reason why you don't have money. So you have to change something that you're doing today to get yourself closer to that wealth that you're talking about. And that wealth is not going to find you sitting down binge watching um, a full season of um, Stranger Things season four, which is amazing, or part two coming out in July, but whatever. You know, it's not going to catch you on your couch. It's going to catch you outside doing some that, something that is in line with your purpose, being intentional about what you're looking for, seeking the wisdom from people that actually going to tell you how to attain wealth and understanding the value that the time is going to take is going to create an appreciation for that wealth as well. You don't just go, you don't become wealthy by spending money. You actually become wealthy by not spending it. It's wild. It's just like, you just, you know, it's a wild concept. It's completely out there. It's perverse, maybe. It's kind of insane. The people that have the most money don't spend basically the majority of their wealth. They spend a, they spend a percentage of it for sure, but that percentage is still nothing to do with how much they actually make throughout the year. Yeah, yeah, you got quiet. You got really quiet. It got really weird. <laughs> no, I think that comment goes to so many areas beyond financially. When you said like people want to stay the same and they just want more money. I think people want love, but then they still want to be toxic. People want friendship, but don't want to be friendly. Like it's like one of those things where it's like, wait, what you want requires you to pivot how you are. And then you're expecting like, okay, just sprinkle a good man in my life. And it's like, well, your life or sprinkle a good woman in my life. And it's like, your life though <laughs> like if the, it's, it's like want wanting a six to... pack you're like hey i want a six pack but you the people that you're following on social media in their workouts are working out to yeah. get their six pack they're working out like, they're doing kind of have to go do that thing that they're doing and if you find if you follow them throughout the day you'd find how difficult it is to one create the body and to two entertain the people to create the audience that creates even more money and more opportunity for them it's not as easy as advertised it's not and that's nice. that's the pretty of it james clear says um this is a quote that i think a lot of people say is like um one of his most quoted things out of his book is you don't rise to the level of your goals you fall to the level of your systems and systems is how you organize your life systems is how you structure and for me like I've been going to the gym a lot more I'm down about 30 pounds now and one of the biggest things is that I had to realize that I had all these other things like oh well my hormones all these other things right but then I started reading stories of people that have the same type of autoimmune process that I have that figured out a way to lose hundred pounds. They figured out a way to lose 75 pounds. And then it took, it took the excuses away. It just took me saying, I'm going to go see my doctor. I'm going to see my numbers. I'm going to see what I'm deficient in. And there's certain things I just can't eat. Like I'm just not eating that. And well, I could complain what well, other people eat then they're just fine, but that's not my story. I have to do what's right for me so that I can, you know, see the change. And it took, it took years, right? It took years of like, I'm, I'm always in flame. I'm always not feeling well, but then I had to do something about it because I can complain about how I am, but then I, what am I doing about it? And I think um, in the last month or so, I had like a lot of family stuff going on and seeing my mom, it just really kind of made me realize like life really is short and you have to start doing things that you know that are going to make you happy. But when I say happiness, I'm not talking about the things that are just uh, like a buzz. Like, oh, I'm going to go get like this expensive bag that after a while, I'm not even going to care about. What I mean by happiness is like being at peace, like going to sleep and being okay with who you are because you showed up as best as you can and actually doing the things. And even though it's hard to do the quote unquote things that are going to help us reach your goals, you start to realize how good you feel. Like I'm so good that like the day that one of the days, like rest day, 
I literally was like, oh my gosh, I really want to go to the gym. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm becoming one of those people that are like, oh my gosh, I want to go. I, I, I love the idea that you said you're becoming one of those people, right? Because that's what it is. It, it becomes your personality. It becomes who you are. You don't just go running you become a runner you don't just go to the gym you can become a, a, a weightlifter I, I i crossfit you know what I'm saying like they verb it out you know what I'm saying? this is what i do i cro- i'm a crossfitter i do this and you join in that level of commitment that changes you like people that quote unquote start off dancing or learning to dance salsa become salsa dancers like it's almost like the adjective to them like this is what they do now this is their life this is who i am and it's something that I actually even um, read about recently, and I'm still, I haven't finished completely, but a book uh, by David Goggins, and that's the one I've been promoting recently, because it's called Can't Hurt Me, Master Your Mind and Defy the Oh, odds. yeah, I've seen you posted that. It's when I mean that. this thing is insane, this guy was over 300 pounds eating bonbons, and he watched something on TV, and he was feeling bad about himself, whatever, depressed, so yeah, on and so forth. Yeah, I've seen some videos about him, and but I've never read the, bu- read the book. This guy saw a video on tv and he said you know i want to be a navy seal right because his life was a complete wreck his past is you know filled with trauma more trauma than most people ever consider right and yet he still continued on labor through changing himself as physically psychologically spiritually and even purpose-wise changing himself and at that time, he was 300 pounds. And the guy told him, like, he walked in there to, I guess, one of the MEPs or whoever, the recruiters, and said he definitely want to do this. The recruiter kind of looked at him. It's like, all right, you're going to need to drop, you know, a um, hundred and some pounds. And then you're also going to actually need to retake the ASVAB, which he sucked at learning. Like, he had a learning disability as well. This guy, all these things working against him. Yet he had three weeks. No, you don't say three weeks. I think I'm going to oversell it. He had probably, like, two months to do it. And he lost pretty much 150 pounds straight up like what what would what would be incomprehensible he has done it at the same time he had to retake the test twice because he sucked at learning so he first tried to do it he generally passed but he missed one section of it like he's supposed to get over a certain percentage of that section so he had to continue doing the workout get in the gym what i mean when he was physically training he would go running biking powerlifting, do it day in, day out, day in, day out. He changed himself. And even beyond that, he because you, you be, when you get, I guess, into becoming a SEAL, it's just an opportunity, which is the brilliant part of it. It's an opportunity to become a SEAL. It doesn't mean you're going to make it. Not everybody makes it. So everything about success is really an opportunity to make it. It's an amazing understanding of how you get to where you're going to go. On top of that, when he's in, you know, he, he suffered all these I- injuries and he becomes a SEAL. I'm not going to give away the entire book, but even afterwards, when he wanted to do, um, I guess, community service or charity to raise money for um, other um, veterans and so on and so forth, he decided to do an ultra marathon. What is an ultra marathon? It's a hundred, it's running a hundred miles in a day. It's an insane proposition, and he talked his way yet again into uh, one of those situations that doesn't make a lot of sense. He says, oh, I'm going to do it. And the guy that, you know, there's usually a race conductor. You don't just jump into marathons. That's one thing, right? Because you have to kind of qualify to get in there. Some of them more more, uh, harshly than not. And on top of this one race, he couldn't just hop in just because he's a, a SEAL, just because he'd done all this thing. Nobody cares. He's like, I don't want you to die on this 100-mile, you know, like, trek. So he sent him to the easiest thing to do. And he, um, and he said, hey, there's, a three, there's one happening three days from now near your house. So he goes, he does this thing. He thought he was doing well. And that thing tested his entire fiber of his soul. By mile 50, he was done. By mile 70, his, his body suffered uh, just kind of catastrophic failure. His foot was being held up like his foot broke. You know, sometimes when your feet break, like your ankles break and stuff like that, the swelling itself kept it together. The only thing that kept it together was the swelling. On top of that, his, his entire lower body, he defecated on himself. I'm not going to kid you. He literally did that because your body loses full bodily control. That's how far he was pushing himself. He was pushing himself beyond the necessary because he, he wanted so far to kind of prove his way into this other thing that he had to kind of finish these 100 miles and he, he had no other chance to do it. This is it. And he found in that space at mile 70, a new 
train train of thought. He changed his entire mindset. If he rewrote his entire brain, which people are not ready to do. He literally said that none of this matters is I have to do this. And he found that his body responded. And nobody's saying, hey, go run 100 miles. I'm not telling you that to go do that insanity. I'm not even going to tell you go do fit, uh, a half marathon because I did that. That thing is tough, tough enough. In the end of the day, I think people have to get out from behind their couches, right? Like be, <laughs> just, just go outside and do something that will push you to a new level. People don't even want to be challenged anymore in society. It's like, I have debt. I don't like it. You fix it. I have student loans. Why don't they cancel it? I, I, I don't, I have this, you know, I, I don't have, uh, my budget's not right. Why don't they just fix my budget and give me more money? Everything is a, just do this for me so I could just sit back and do nothing, which is the exact opposite of what you want. You want to be challenged enough to change. And in changing, you basically pivot your life. He was poor. He was, he was, a, he was a poor guy before all of this. I, now I'm pretty sure he's a multimillionaire because of his book and because of his podcast and stuff like that. God offered him, in my opinion, yet again, God opened the door that you want opened. But the opportunity to, that you're seeking, you have to go through it. And the going through it doesn't mean it's going to be easy. God said, hey, you, you wanted this. He's like, he, he throws his hands. He's like, eh, you, know, you, you wanted the opportunity. I slid the hand. You know, now it's up to you to figure it out. Go through it and allow yourself to be physically, psychologically, and spiritually changed. That's what it, um, to me, that's what wealth and happiness is all about. I had to go through a process like that in order for me to be in a position where I could sit back and be like, I have a travel, I have travel for every month for the rest of the year. I, you know, how, and, and we just picked up a, a puppy. He got extra costs, whatever. People's like, how are you doing Thank it? You. Because I am, in my mind, I'm more so, I'm going beyond whatever I conceive anymore. I'm actually dreaming more. I'm actually saying, you know what? I want to earn more money. How am I going to do that? I'm allowing my brain to think my way into the next existence. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know if I, I prattled on, but nah, that book is good. phenomenal. I think um, Can't Hurt Me needs to be like on somebody's list right now. Oh, every, I'm, maybe not for the ladies because it's a little, it's, it's no, for the be. ladies. No, I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to say it's not. It's just, it's. I would say it's mandatory for, you know, for young men. Young Black men is a mandatory read. I think that's how I want to phrase it. Okay. It's something that you need to understand as a young Black man, and that's, what's, that's what you're going to need. Those pieces are what's completely available for you that you need to change who you are. I think that's how I want to phrase it. Not to say that it, it, this message is not universal. It could hit anybody anytime. He talks about different people in there, a lot of different experiences, things that would probably be phenomenal one guy there was a, a skydiver man his story was wild the skydiver uh well, like a military skydiver type of thing whatever he they were here doing an exercise in that exercise another person hits him he goes like catapulting towards the ground no parachute hits that sucker three times he bounced his body bounced body fractured and in when he finally landed, the people that helped him is the day before he taught of some people how to do emergency care, like how to do a punch a trachea to actually allow somebody to breathe. They use the same technique that he taught them. You, you talk about divine providence or whatever it is, that technique, he, you know, allowed them to breathe enough to, you know, bring them to the hospital, stabilize and so on and so forth. And at some point, the doctor said, you, will, you probably won't be able to ever do any of this. It's a miracle that you're alive, right? And lo and behold, this guy trains himself back into physical fitness to the point where he does it again. He jumps again. He becomes like he trains other people to continue to jump. He continued to do what he loved. And what in that moment, you could tell that these are people that are not they're superhuman in the way that they perceive themselves, that they do not see limitations anymore. And if you see everything as a limitation to you, then how can you change? Of course, is like, hey, if I hit the ground three times from para, you know, uh, parachuting down, I'll probably lay my behind down somewhere, you know, take a good, nice military pension, live what it is. Like he didn't have to do all of this, but he wheeled himself back into health because he refused to just lay there. 
this is what people are doing every day. If you want to be wealthy, what you don't see with LeBron, right? I know recently he became a billionaire or something. People are like, oh, you did, he, oh, he's the first uh, sports person to do that. You don't understand. This guy's been working for 20, you know, 30, 40, damn near 40 years. Damn near 40 years. This entire existence has been all but work. What you see is him performing, you know, like uh, he's, he's doing what he's loved, but this is all work. This is physical training. This is discipline. This is a focused mind. This is not eating that um, chili cheesesteak. Yeah, he, like he's not out here. Yeah, he's not out here just pounding down drinks. You won't find those type of footage because it doesn't really exist because a physical specimen and an Olympian level person, right, is not a person that is completely kind of like waste their body. They don't do it. Any inactive moment is an active moment for them. Even when they're sitting down, like to play video games or something, it's likely their body is finally getting a moment to rest. Right. It's which an- is part of the this part of the game for them. Yeah, it's mental fortitude. I think um I had put this voice note in the group about being in the rehab place and literally watching people scream about n- just the fear of walking again. Like not actually walking and feeling pain like the fear of doing it there's this one lady that was screaming I, I will never forget that sound in my my ears because it, in that moment it awakened something in me because I realized that she had ability to even try and fear her mind could not conceptualize her doing it again without it hurting and so that was what paralyzed her not necessarily a physical element and so I was sitting here thinking like, that's somebody about walking, but how many other areas in my own life that fear is like just being the person that just paralyzes me? Like, well, should I even do that? Because maybe somebody's going to say something about it. Or how about if I do that and I fail? And then so you just never try, you never do, you never get to see change. And so it's always on the backside of something. It's always on the backside of the storm. And I think everybody's been asking me lately, well, how are you doing? I'm like, I'm good. And they're like, you're not telling the truth. I'm like, no, I am. Because this is mentally fortifying me. Like, do you know how much more mentally stronger I am today than I was 30, 40 days ago? Because it wasn't just one thing. It was like one thing, two things, three things, four things. Let's pressure, pressure. And I've been experiencing pressure since last year. And I realized, oh, the pipes didn't bro. I didn't lose my mind. I just, okay, this happened. How do I handle this? This happened. How do I handle this? Like, you, you, y'all in the group, so y'all know all the stuff that's been going on, well, at least partial of the stuff that's been going on. Like, you get calls that are like movie type stuff. Like, yo, this person is here and this is what's going on. Like, you see that stuff in movies and you have to make decisions and you have to actually act and you have to be a leader. I ain't got time to be crying in the corner. I had to respond. And for me, it was just like, I got a high out of it, not because it was the season was easy, but it's fortifying me as a leader. It's showing me like you, you fell on your ass. So what are you going to do? Are you going to stay on your ass or are you going to do something about it? <laughs> yeah, I, I think, you know, I think you love that book as well because he calls it calcifying your mind. Mm. The idea that you build calluses on your hand while he was lifting weights, he felt his body, he was calcifying his mind for the next available challenge over and over again. So the by the time he got to running the ultra race, because obviously he ran even more ultras afterwards, you know, because like, he because he, he called that guy like that 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 challenged him to do it. He's like, and the guy's like, he was he he thought the guy was gonna be impressed. He's like, he's like, hey, I I ran a hundred miles and 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 eighteen minutes um, less. Uh, eight, it's like yeah, it's like I think it was like eight hours less than um, the, the 24 hours or something like that, right? Or something to that extent. Or maybe it was six hours less. And the guy says, oh, it was a 24-hour run. Did you stop running, really? He just the guy, <laughs> the guy is in with the, he was not, he's like, it, it, and, and, and he, you know, the end of conversation and the guy, he, he thought about it. He muddled over it. And this would, some, um, some people would not like these statements when they're made to them. But when he internalized it, he realized what the guy was saying. He's, he's asking you to run 24 mi- hours, right? Can you do a 24 hour run? And he's right. It's not a, just about the running a hundred miles in 24 hours. It's about running the 24 hours. Do you have what it takes? That's the question. The question is like, it, it, it's just a question. If you're mad at the question, I don't know what else you're gonna say, but, and that guy decides, you know what? I'm gonna have to run something else. And after his body was completely fractured, I think the next, um, 
two weeks. Yeah, in, in two weeks, there was a, a marathon, like a Vegas marathon that was happening. His wife was going to do it and his mom was going to do it walking, right? His mom was going to do it walking. The wife was gonna, actually going to run it. And he was not even expecting to do anything, but he just kind of jumped in there to kind of just, you know, trot along. And he was expecting to sit back and watch his mom and, uh, and, and wife pass through the finish line at some point. And lo and behold, he started running and he even said something snapped in him. And he started running and he just never stopped. He finished that in that marathon in record time. Like as he was running and somebody else run past him or, or running with him, he's like, yeah, if you kind of make this time, you're going to get to the Boston Marathon. He's like, what? Physically, he shouldn't be able to do it, but he's changed himself so much that he changed his life. And I think that's what you're seeing with anybody that's um, having a financial journey, seeing the financial changes, no matter what it is, even if it's entrepreneurship, if it's just investment or real estate, you're finding people that have calcified their minds and their purpose, and they're focusing on what works for them. For me, financial literacy worked. It worked so well that I put it out there. I put it on my website. I share with people all the time to the point where it gets to a point I'm doing, I'm shrugging because I can't tell you anything else that's different now. You're going to have to just do this or you're going to have to just say you don't, you don't want to, which is fine. Like it won't hurt my life at all. Like if you don't want to do anything, that's cool. I was in Quebec. It was amazing. If you never want to go to Quebec city, fine by me. I don't want you to go there. <laughs> like this is an amazing place with happy people that are beyond just this financially wealthy thing, right? You have people just wearing regular clothes, whatever it is. And I'm pretty sure to even get there, you're going to have to have some paper. But these are not people walking around ostentatiously. They're not watching Gotti or whatever it is, multiple layers you know, of, of, of dripping with, with cash. That's not what this is. These are people just enjoying themselves. And that's where I always tell people now, like, I, I hope I see you on the other um, side of wealthy and happy. Yeah. That's it. There's nothing else because on the other side, it's freaking amazing. I took a bike ride. Like, there's a, yeah, my story of that day, I had a, to buy a, to rent a bike and my wife had to be in the spot because it's her birthday. So she's buying it out. And I had to rent a bike. The guy talks French. He's like, yeah, you know, hey, tous les, tous les gens, you know, it, it, it basically it's like switching it up. And it's like all these people, they, they come here and to rent the bike. And these are, this is the road. You can either take option one or option two. Option one, he was like, go to the falls. I'm like, I went to the falls. I looked at him like, I never went to the falls, bro. Like I thought I was just a random bike, but I'll, I'll look at option two. He shows me option two. It goes around in the circle. And I'm, he's like, it's 21 kilometers. I, I'm like, all right, cool. I'm, I'm going to do this. He gave me a map. I went, I, I started biking on this thing. And then I started doing the math. You know, an hour in, you start doing some math in your head. <laughs> like, this is not ending well, right? This is not going on. I was doing 35 miles. Oh, wow. On the straight up a bike. And at one point, I missed the turn, completely missed the turn. I went back because I, it would it would trouble me to not know what was you know in that section I didn't do. I went back in the section just to see what it is. I'm like, that's lame. I went right back again. So I did an additional five miles on top of that. This is like, but this is something you can actually physically do. It's not the end of the world. It's not, you know, if I felt great, everybody was biking out there, everybody was loving life. I stopped a few times for direction. I was just like looking at the map, other people gave me direction very friendly people, very open people. I passed by a neighborhood where I think the lady, out, she had next to her house, like a place where bikes could actually pump air in their tires. Wow. You know, like people live differently somewhere. You could do that. And to think I used to be in like, hey, there's some places, Bay County, you know, hey, God bless Bay County for what it is. You can't stop a bike in Bay County. Not like that. You can't park park a bike I saw like in the middle of nowhere and think it's gonna you're gonna see it when you come back. It ain't gonna happen. <laughs> it's not Dade County. <laughs> so in this situation, you find that there there are people, there are things you can do. There's happiness you can find as beyond whatever you're looking at right now. And you have to decide: do you want it or you do you don't? If you don't, don't Just complain. Keep Just keep it what it is. <laughs> keep it 100. This is a good episode. I think there was so much. We talked about a lot of different things, but I think wrapping up, it's like before you can even do, there's all the stuff, the resources to figure out what net worth is. And again, I was saying that earlier today, when you want to learn something, you will learn it. When you want to, because think about like all the stuff, like 
we didn't grow up using Instagrams or TikToks or Facebooks or LinkedIn. These were not things, these were things that came around. And I remember how when um, Squarespace around, people were actually coding to make their, you know, Squarespace pages look, I'm um, not Squarespace pages, my, uh, MySpace pages look, you know, razzle dazzle. And it's like, now it's like, oh, coding is hard. Like you, you, when you wanted your, your MySpace page to look razzle dazzle, you figured out that HTML, okay? You made it happen. Oh yeah, you put in the codes, man. You yeah. had to copy somebody's code. You had to learn like, hey, what you what what did you use to do that? Exactly. So it's like, when you have a desire for something you do learn. And I think again, like when it comes to wealth, when it comes to change, when it comes to making impact or whatever else, I'm happy for this growth season because I'm realizing there is so much more within you. Yeah, things don't work out the way you want them or they're not yet what you want them to be, but that fortifying your mind and knowing that these things don't like, oh, you're like, crap, that happened and I'm still here. And I still can make decisions and I still can improve. Oh crap, I could do that again. And I don't have to woe into what I need to woe into. Cause I um I ended up starting the NBA like what two weeks ago. And my aunt was like, love, you know, with everything that's going on, like, are you like, are you okay? Like this is not a good time. And I was just like, what better time to test my resolve? What better time for me to get better? Because yes, there's a lot going on, but I don't know what's gonna happen a year from now. I, I could think today's a lot, and then next year it's like, whoa, that really is a lot. So just get it done when you can um, so that you can be better. So when it comes to your financial literacy, it comes to making steps, it really does come with defining your values and it does come with discipline. Um, I know we don't like those words, discipline, productivity, transformation. We just want it to be done, but do what you got to do so that you can actually experience a life that maybe you want. We will never tell you what life you should have, but I think there's something to be said. And I'll, I'll say this last story. And it, it's the most, at least to me, it was funny. But um, one of my friends right before I left was like, hey, you know, it's going to be your birthday, whatever else. Um, let's go out and whatever. So I was like in downtown beach, like in Fort Lauderdale. And there was like this BMW, a beautiful car. Like it was a beautiful car. Like, oh, this is a nice car that was on the right lane. And there's this other car that was like a, a old, old, old car, right? And the guy's turning into it and he's cursing out the, the, the person with the BMW. And the BM, like I was there for a while to see that the BMW did nothing. And I was just like, it's because you want the BMW. Like, cause he mentioned that in his, like his windows were down. He's like, oh, that damn BMW. And they think they're so important. It's like, no, you think they're important. You made that up in your mind that that person that's driving that car is important. So I'm like, it's not because your car is whatever it's old. Like right now, somebody's like, hey, you're gonna get a car. I don't need a, I don't need a freaking BMW. I'm gonna get a car that works. I don't need a new car. But I also am not gonna have an old older car and then deem myself not important. So I realized that this other person is driving a car. You have no idea if they're late on their payments. You have no idea if they got gas in the car. You don't know the story, but you're projecting. And the guy was so mad. And I had realized like, you're just mad because maybe that's what you desire. So I think- in life as well is like be real with what you desire. I do think that some of us do want more and we just try to say that, oh, you know, that's not me. I'm not going to be able to get it, but we do want more. But in wanting more, you also do have to be willing to change. So don't look at other people. Don't see, you know, the the, the neighborhood finance um, travel trips and be like, man, he always talking about budgeting. Here he is in a trip. And it's like, yeah, that's if you do budgeting well and financial literacy well, you could be on many trips if you want to without it being a hassle. So however you define your life, I'll leave you with just making sure that you know who you are and be willing to do the work and break through when times need to change. Ooh, that's a lot. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't think there's a lot more I can add to that, but if I could, I would say that, yeah, you prioritize what's important in your life at any given time. And every time that you do it, any decision that you make throughout the day will show you your priorities and if you really want to change, it's it's out there for you, but you're just going to have to go, go for it. And you got to be willing to understand that your entire life will change. Sometimes that means falling out of favor or falling out of closeness with your, some of your close friends. Some, they could still be your friends, but you might not be hanging around with them you know, anymore because it's not necessarily your priorities anymore. doesn't mean that they're bad people. It doesn't mean that you, know, you, you turn into a bad person. It means that there's different seasons in which you're going to have to really decide the type of person you're going to be. In this season of my life, I'm trying to project, in my mind, an image I've never seen before of a happy Lawrence who has a big family home with the dogs that run in the, the backyard, uh, biking or uh, yeah, doing longer bike rides, you know, like a, one city to another, 
traveling when he feels like. That's what I want to live. I don't want to be at the club. I don't want to be at the brunch. I don't want to be at Lauren, somebody's something. Brunches. Hey, mm-hmm. well, I, I, no, I had to drop Lauren, it in. It, it, <laughs> were you in the last ninety days? Have you been at a brunch? Yes, I have been at a brunch. So I'm gonna keep. I'm keeping it lit. I, I still talk about it. Doesn't mean that it's not true. I'm just. It's not a priority for me to be at the space where I'm gonna be. I have to be made to feel almost like I I have to be something else. I have to dress differently. I have to sound differently and I have to kind of take photos and I don't want that. That's a society or a lifestyle that's not congruent with mine. We need to do a whole short episode of what made Lauren take brunches. Oh, this, <laughs> it's, and that's the thing. It's just an analogy for the lifestyle. It's yeah. actually an analogy for black culture and black lifestyle and modern day black culture, black lifestyle. I'm calling it out right now for what it is. So it's not nothing like people are like, and he insinuated, no, he said exactly, quote him on it, modern day Black culture is not good for me. It might be good for you. It's just not good for me. Mm-mm-mm. We're going to leave it at that. Thank you so Woo! much. <laughs> it, got, it got really deep. It got really weird. You were like, I thought I was going to like him. He's like, mm-mm, mm-mm. Did you hear the end of that? Like, mm but no, all jokes aside, thank you so much um, for listening to the Financial Grio podcast. And uh, we will be up in con this year. Thank you, Florence, because I was just watching the group chats. I'm like, oh, okay, this is going on. Okay, I'll add it to my calendar somewhere along the way. <laughs> and Lawrence made it happen. So I'm, I'm glad we, we get to see each other. We haven't seen each other in a while, so. Um, yeah. Oh, no, know, we, Atlanta. Well, Al- oh, Atlanta got it and you got it by proxy. But yes. I'm still trying to get it. But my wife actually cleared me to actually buy the ticket as well. So it was just in case. Wait. Yeah, just in case I didn't, I didn't get it. She was like, I'll allow it. So we'll see. Definitely, I already got my plane ticket. So I'll be at FinCon. FinCon is a gathering of a lot of financial literacy, educators, influencers, um, people that even like um, write books about financial literacy and wealth building and investing, so on and so forth. People have podcasts. They have mastermind classes. They're, you know, your faves out there in these streets. And ultimately, it's a good opportunity for them to connect and learn from each other and trying to build their brand, as well as opportunity for us definitely to go there and see if we could find uh, great um, special guests that would be able to come on this show to share a lot of their knowledge, because we do want to talk a little bit more about financial um, empowerment, education, and things you can use to change your life. So ultimately, thanks again for... Uh, coming by, listen to us, share this with your friends, your family. Do not skip on that because those shares actually do matter. And definitely like uh, and subscribe to us where you get a chance because it's an it's a s- small act for you, but it's a positive act to reinforce that we want to change the community. So thank you for that. That's dope. Thank you. See y'all later. Thank you for listening to the Financial Grio Podcast powered by the Wealth Builders Collective.